Another whistleblower raises concerns about the safety of its planes, and new figures show it's falling further behind Airbus. What exactly is going on with Boeing? Well, to get to the bottom of that, let's speak to travel industry analyst Henry Hartevelt from Atmosphere Research Group. Thanks so much for being with us, Henry. It's turned into another bad week for Boeing, hasn't it? It has been a bad week on top of a bad week on top of many bad weeks for Boeing. Uh, it's disappointing and it's surprising. So the latest claims reported in the New York Times, these are, raise concerns about the building of 787s and 777s. So not just the 737 MAX. This is what the, this latest whistleblower has said. He doesn't like the way that they were constructing these and that it was going to harm the life of the plane, was basically his point. I mean, how worried should passengers be about the safety of Boeing planes when we have yet another whistleblower coming forward? Look, obviously, when we get on a commercial airplane, we are placing our trust not only with the airline that we bought the ticket from, but the maker of the aircraft that airline is using. Uh, and uh, while I would say what I would say about it, the latest allegations is that they are serious, they deserve to be investigated. But as an analyst, I'm not quite sure I buy all of the claims that are being made. I do know that Boeing wants to and intends to build the safest possible planes. Um, when you are building something as complex as a large jet airliner, sometimes things don't go quite right, but Boeing has processes in place to make sure that they should go right. The emphasis there is should. So what are the practices that this latest whistleblower has a problem with? And how do they compare with the, the other practices that have been called out in the past? Right. So, so in the latest was, uh, whistleblower allegation, the gentleman says that uh, he has seen 787 uh, aircraft uh, being assembled with too much pressure as the fuselage is being put together, and that he is concerned it would create metal fatigue. Well, the 787 fuselage is made from composite materials, not metal. So there is probably not metal fatigue that's at issue here. And according to Boeing, the pressure that is being used to assemble these parts is between five and 10 pounds. If you put your thumb on a table and press on it, that's about five pounds of pressure. So I don't know if those allegations are serious. The allegations about the 777 assembly are more concerning to me because he's claiming that people are stomping on metal uh, uh, parts to get them to fit where they should. And what concerns me about that is, one, obviously, the damage to the structure. But what I question is, if this was happening in 2024 or 2023, 2022, whenever this was taking place recently, wouldn't video of these this bad behavior somehow have leaked out? I suppose what people might be wondering is whether or not these practices are something that they should be worrying about, but also whether or not the airlines are worried about it, the airlines that they're flying with, because you put your trust in the, the airline ultimately to choose the right plane to get you to the de destination. Correct. So let's let's take a look at that. In the wake of what happened in January of this year with the Alaska Airlines 737 MAX, several airlines dispatched more of their staff to the Boeing assembly factory uh, in uh, outside of Seattle, Washington, to ensure that their aircraft were being manufactured properly. Um, um, and the FAA uh, in the U.S. has dispatched more inspectors to that same factory to also ensure uh, that those aircraft are being made properly. And they have told Boeing that it can produce no more than 38 737 MAX jets a month until the FAA is satisfied that everything is going accordingly. In the case of the 787 and 777 allegations, these cover a period from 2020 to 2022, and Boeing claims that they have made adjustments to the manufacturing process uh, uh, and the assembly process, so these problems um, are less likely to occur. And uh, uh, what, what I would just add, if I may, 
yeah. is that the airlines do have people there who are in the factory and who do inspect aircraft. And we have not heard from airlines any examples of problems with newly delivered aircraft. Uh, you talk about the, the FAA, obviously, the, the Federal Aviation Administration, and Boeing in its uh, rebuttal of the, the latest uh, revelations or claims, I suppose, from, from the whistleblower, also talk about the FAA. They say that the issues raised have been subject to rigorous engineering uh, examination under FAA oversight. This analysis has validated that these issues do not present any safety concerns and the aircraft will, uh, will maintain its service life over several decades. So, yeah, it's, it's saying that these practices are not going to harm how long these aircraft last. But isn't part of the problem in using FAA oversight as a defence that confidence in the FAA itself is waning? That's a very fair point. And in the wake of the 737 MAX crashes that occurred several years ago, killing 346 people, it became very clear that there was too cozy of a relationship between the FAA and Boeing at the time. And in fact, the new administrator of the FAA here in the US has said that he is going to basically take on Boeing, that uh, Boeing is going to have to really prove that everything is correct and that the, the if you will, more routine sign-offs on things that may have once been a practice of the FAA will no longer be the way business is conducted there. And I think that is correct. The FAA does need to be more objective, and they do need to tell Boeing, look, we found a problem, fix it, when indeed legitimate problems occur. But even if that change were to happen now, Boeing and the FAA have had this relationship going back years, decades. So as a passenger, when you look at having a plane maker who over whom there are questions. You have a, a, a regulator over whom there are questions. And then you also have them overseen by a US government for whom Boeing is a very, very important organization. How can they have the same level of confidence that what is being produced and what is being said from those three parties is something that can be trusted? Well, look, it's, and that's a very good question. And uh, uh, there's, you know, Boeing's reputation right now is tarnished. Boeing used to be so well respected. There was a saying ages ago, if it's not a Boeing, I'm not going. Now you do have people who are concerned about getting on Boeing aircraft, regardless of airline and which type of Boeing airplane it is. So Boeing does need to fix this. The FAA also needs to prove to the public that it is being more objective, that it is holding Boeing to a higher standard. And frankly, the airlines now have to shoulder more responsibility that they are reviewing newly delivered aircraft more thoroughly and making sure the public realizes that the airlines are, are uh, not only inspecting newly delivered aircraft, but making sure that their maintenance people go over these planes uh, with the proverbial fine tooth comb. Uh, so that they stay in, in perfect operating condition. A Boeing, as, as you would hope it would, is saying that you know, it has full confidence in the safety of its aircraft. In fact, uh, CEO David Calhoun has been talking about this. Let's just have a, a listen to what he had to say. We believe in our airplanes. We feel that safe airplanes, our people do. We have confidence in the safety of our airplanes, and that's what all of this is about. And we fully understand the gravity. Yeah, David Calhoun saying he understands the gravity there, not wanting to seem glib, you know, in, 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 in saying that people's concerns, you know, are, are not being taken seriously. But Calhoun's actually leaving his post by the end of the year. That's what Boeing has said. They're still looking for his replacement. Is a change at the top of the organisation likely to make a difference? Well, look, Mr. Calhoun was basically shown the door. Uh, uh, Boeing, uh, members of Boeing's board of directors spoke with several key airline executives, uh, and they basically said, we've lost confidence in uh, Mr. Calhoun and his leadership. Um, and so it is incumbent on Boeing to find a new CEO who will be uh, respected by the employees and who will be respected by airlines. A big part of this is going to be working on the safety culture at Boeing and putting more focus on engineering and excellence in engineering and manufacturing and the details like that. 
It's critical. Uh, it's not going to happen overnight. Something like this will take time. The, the manufacturing process of an, a commercial airliner is very complex. There's a lot of engineering and design work that goes into it. And before Boeing makes a change, they need to figure out what change will be the most effective, how do they do it, and bring the FAA in to say, here's what we would like to do, please review this, can we go proceed and then test it and make sure it's working. So there's a lot of rigor that must go into this. Um, and I think that, that the successor to Mr. Calhoun is going to be very aware that whoever she or he may be, when they walk into that CEO office, they literally have the weight of the world on their shoulders because Boeing airplanes are operated by uh, aircraft all over the world, transporting uh, uh, hundreds of thousands of people a day. And uh, none of them uh, 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 can afford to have anything go wrong. Henry, I, I think we, we started by talking about how, you know, this was a, another bad week for Boeing. We, it feels like we're getting revelation after revelation after revelation, some of which, uh, you know, are fairly pinned on Boeing, perhaps, and some of which maybe aren't. There's quite a lot of noise, and I think it might be worth us just trying to sort of break through the noise and just look at the, the numbers, because we have had some numbers this week, and those are delivery figures from Boeing. Boeing delivered 83 passenger and cargo planes to customers in the first three months of this year. Now, 83 doesn't sound like a lot when it has a backlog of thousands, I think. Is that, is that very many? Well, uh, you know, look, on one hand, yes, 83 commercial airplanes is a lot. These are complex aircraft to uh, assemble, uh, test, and deliver. But at the same time, Boeing's production capability, its capacity, is much larger. Uh, you know, so Boeing is delivering fewer aircraft than it potentially could. And that is in part because the FAA uh, has imposed a ceiling on the company of no more than 38 737 MAX jets per month. Uh, I expect that we will see Boeing deliver more new aircraft in the second calendar quarter of the year. Uh, and if things go well, we'll see them, I hope, deliver even more going forward. But the problem here is that airlines are receiving fewer new aircraft than expected. That is causing some airlines to scramble their summer flying schedules, which could lead to fewer flight options for travelers. We don't know if that could be higher fares or not, because that's a competitive uh, function. Um, but certainly, it may be less convenient. And Airbus, meanwhile, is out delivering uh, Boeing. And not only does that give Airbus bragging rights, but financially for Boeing, they, they are paid by airlines in, in great part when the aircraft are delivered. So the fewer delivered aircraft, the less cash coming into the door at Boeing. One of the big customers of Boeing in the United States is obviously United Airlines, and they've complained that Boeing is putting a bit too much effort in developing the new MAX 10 jet, the 737 MAX, when it they would prefer for it to be actually meeting that ceiling figure for the number of 737 MAXs that it is delivering, because it's still clearly not meeting that figure it's, 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 if it's only delivering 83 over three months. Right. Um, firstly, why is, exactly why is that ceiling there? And is there more that Boeing could have been doing to deliver more to its customers, as in the airlines? I believe that this the 38 uh, uh, aircraft per month is where Boeing was ramping back up in terms of production in the wake of COVID, 737 groundings and so on. Um, um, and uh, so the FAA said to them basically, okay, you can build or you can deliver roughly three of, you know, uh, or, or I'm sorry, a little more than one new airplane a day to your customers because the FAA wants to make sure its inspectors have the time necessary to go through these aircraft and inspect that everything is as it should be. For example, bolts on that plug door that we saw fall off the Alaska Airlines aircraft. Um, Boeing is also behind schedule in getting the 737 MAX 7, which is the smallest version, and 10, which is the largest version of that airplane, certified. And United went to the extreme of saying, we're not counting on this airplane at all 
and has removed them from their fleet plan and future schedules for the time being. So, you know, Boeing is struggling. And, and right now, Boeing has to prove that it knows how to build a safe airplane, is building a safe airplane, and is capable of building and delivering more of them. And the FAA is holding Boeing to a very high standard, as it should, and basically saying, Boeing, the burden of proof is on you right now. If the FAA and airlines are satisfied, then I expect that ceiling will be lifted. But it will be lifted, I believe, gradually. Um, um, but any uh, improvement in the delivery numbers in the ceiling of, of possible deliveries will be a good thing for both Boeing and the airlines. But Boeing, at one point, I believe, wanted to produce somewhere near 70, 737 MAX jets a month. And obviously, it's far below that. Airbus, obviously, Boeing's main competitor. If you have a look at their deliveries over recent years, it's been ahead of Boeing for the last five, when before that, that was all, all but unheard of, wasn't it? Um, has Airbus been capitalising on the, the problems at Boeing? Are airlines choosing to buy, I don't know, a, a, a Neo rather than a Max? Well, look, I mean, you know, airlines make aircraft uh, purchase decisions very carefully. I've worked for several uh, U.S. airlines. I've been involved in fleet planning, uh, uh, and and you know, you 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 don't make aircraft purchase decisions based on headlines. But while uh, while the challenges that Boeing have been facing have been very public, what's interesting is they ha they have received orders for new aircraft, and that is in part because the airlines believe in Boeing. But it's also because Airbus is essentially sold out for the next few years in terms of new aircraft delivery positions. So if you were an airline and you went to Airbus and said, when can I get a new airplane, whether it's the smallest A220 jet or the A350 long range aircraft or anything in between, they may tell you it's several years. With Boeing, you might be able to get that airplane faster. And for an airplane that wants to grow, Speed is everything. Henry Hartevelt from Atmosphere Research Group. Thank you so much for fielding all our questions on this. It's been great to have you on. And thanks to you for watching. There's plenty more from the DW Business Team here on the DW News YouTube channel. So we'll see you in whatever you choose to watch next. Goodbye.